I'm Kelsey Wingle. I'm the Associate Paintings Conservator at the Yale Art Gallery. I'm Mark Mitchell. I'm the Holcomb T. Green Curator of American Paintings and Sculpture. I think of Roger Sherman as New Haven's most famous revolutionary. And when I look at the portrait, I feel like I have the opportunity to get to know him, like I can have a conversation with this man. It feels so direct and so immediate. And I think about the world that he knew as a young person. He's from Massachusetts. Uh, He moves over to Connecticut uh, in his early 20s and then moves to New Haven at age 40. And this is really where he sort of settles in. It's really when he comes to New Haven that he comes to sort of meet his place in history. He is elected to represent Connecticut in the first Continental Congress in 1774, where he signs the first of the four documents that he would be involved with uh, that create the foundations of the country, the Articles of Association in 1774. And that is, it's the sort of document that begins the process that leads to, two years later, to the declaration that he helps write He's one of the five members of the drafting committee. He becomes really an integral part of the entire process of the revolution as a member of the Continental Congress, and he later helps to frame the Constitution, uh, signs that as well in 1787. And so he, he really is an integral partner both in formulating the Declaration of Independence, signing the Articles of Association, the Declaration, the Articles of Confederation, as well as the Constitution. I think of especially his importance to the Constitution and uh, the Connecticut Compromise that he helped to shape, which created the bicameral legislature that we now know. And so to a significant degree, we might not have had a Constitution if it were not for Roger Sherman. He was referred to as a kind of archetypal Puritan. (laughs) He had this very sort of abstemious reputation. And I think a lot of that comes through in this painting. After the revolution, he becomes the first mayor of New Haven. So he stays in his relationship here. uh, And he goes on to become a representative to the new Congress, as well as a senator at the end of his life. And so he's, he's foundational in the documents. He's foundational in the forming of the country. And then he becomes one of our first elected officials. And so it's a kind of breathtaking sweep in a very short number of years for this person to play such an important role in the shaping of the country. But this is the painting that people associate with him in terms of American history and identity. This is the the quintessential portrait of a revolutionary by Ralph Earl. And so in a lot of ways, the directness of the expression, the simplicity of the environment, the concentration on the look, the very engaging look that he gives you is very compelling. And that invitation, I think, is one that remains so present, it remains so immediate, that we can really kind of engage Roger Sherman across time. The painting in the early 20th century was one of the ones that early American art historians look to, and it's sort of in every book of the early 20th century about the kind of origins of American art, as artists tried to differentiate their work from British precedent, older tradition, trying to think about what is an American, what is an American artist, but also what is an American sitter. And Sherman, who is no Mr. Charisma, he is sort of famous for being kind of awkward and and not funny or charming or witty, <laughs> but instead rather serious. There's a sense in this painting of so much of that carried forward. The very simple muslin of his cravat, the wool suit, uh, the very simple uh, hose and shoes. He does have these very nice uh, buckles on the shoes. And he apparently was a shoemaker, a cobbler, early, early on in his life. 
may get a little bit of a shout out there in the refinement of the buckles. But it is a very special painting that offers us a lot of the sort of richness of understanding of what in the early 20th century art historians were trying to like figure out, find, trying to tell the story of American art. The painting descended in his family all the way into the 20th century when it came directly to Yale from his great grandson in 1918. And so that moment was really a moment of reflection. You're coming up on the 150th anniversary of the Declaration. And so historians, art historians, are trying to discern that history and trying to recognize distinctive attributes of American art and American identity. And this painting was one of their jumping off points. And from that day to this, it's really been an anchor of the story of American art. Do you want to say something about this painting being like a mainstay, an anchor in our galleries? Sure. Uh, in our American galleries over you know, the past hundred years. When you walk into the American galleries, Roger Sherman is one of the first things that you see. And he really speaks across a great distance. He is a very, like I said, it's a large painting. It's one that commands the space and commands the eye. So you, you sort of, your eye goes to him in any gallery. Right now, I feel his absence every day. I feel like he's missing. And so I know exactly where he goes. When I look into that gallery, I know exactly where he's going to come back to. Because in a lot of ways, he's so commanding of a space. He's so unique. And so there's a very special experience of having this painting in a gallery because you know, we have our high style portraits, we have George Washington, we have the stories of the revolution. Even in that equation, Roger Sherman is special and stands out. He has a, a, a difference of effect and a, a richness of experience that very nicely moves back and forth between what I would call academic painting, meaning professional trained painting and, you know, art academy leading you to sort of prominence in London or Paris. Or a more vernacular style of an itinerant portraitist making pictures of middle class people in cities in rural New England who never went to art school, who just learned by doing and by looking at other works of art and prints. So the painting very successfully looks both ways. It has a kind of awkwardness of a person who hasn't been to art school yet. He will, but he hasn't been there yet. And so the painting seems to look both ways simultaneously, and it, it gives us a chance to tell all of that in one work of art. And I think it's a very special thing. And it's, for many reasons, it appears in most histories of the story of American art in a very prominent role. Um, often to end a chapter or begin a new one <laughs> because it, it seems so distinct as an expression of its moment and of its sitter and of the enterprise that he was embarked upon. So it's a painting that does a lot of different things in a lot of different ways, and it enables us to bring audiences into the story of the United States and of American art in a way that is really quite special. And that's why he is and will always be a cornerstone of American art. 